Terry Oracle. Welcome back to the Thoth Reader course. We're skipping around, doing a few majors, doing a few uh, minors, doing a few court cards. We're going to keep it kind of interesting and fun. So the first card that we have is going to be the Ace of Swords. First time filming any tutorial on swords. By the way, this is the Thoth Reader's course. This is designed to give you mnemonics to help you read, to get you started, to get you just what you need to go. Now, if you need a thorough course, many, many other YouTubers have done great jobs. Link in the description to one course where the guy has like an hour per card. So we're not going to do that. We're going to get you reading. So the first sword that we have is going to be the Ace of Swords. Easy way to remember this is the crown, sort of like the light bulb when you have a new idea, new inspiration, because the Ace of Swords is all about that inspiration. It's about new opportunities. It's time to pursue those new opportunities. Inspiration, it's time to get particularly passionate about something, time to champion that cause. It's time to get out there and have that inspiration. So it's an extremely positive card, and it tells you to get that bright idea, to get that something that you're passionate about, and to look at it as a new opportunity. So as far as symbolism goes, we have the crown up top. So the mind has gained a, sort of a, a, a bright idea, right? I have something that I didn't have before. I have that new inspiration. I have that new idea, that new uh, bright thing in my life, and I want to pursue it. And this is something that I want to pursue. So again, that's the bright idea and the single sword, the ace of swords. So as far as meanings. Again, we're talking about the new perspective, new ideas, the inspiration, original thinking, creativeness. It's all about that. It's all about getting that done. <clears throat> so how would I use that, uh, for example, in a reading? So you remember the last cards we had talked about the intuition behind the veil. So we have an intuition has provided us with new inspiration or a new idea to go pursue. This is something that we want to do. It was given to us as something sort of handed down. The new inspiration, new idea, and everything is going to be great. So we're going to definitely go pursue that, and that's going to be something that is on our mind. Maybe we have a the new inspiration, the new idea gave us a journey that we want to go on. So this sort of corresponds with the fool, right? The feet are up in the air. He's doing that giant leap. This, so in other words, if you have a romantic reading and they're asking, hey, what do I do about my, uh, my new interest, my new love interest? Should I pursue them or not? You definitely have a new inspiration, new idea um, is definitely coming forth, and you're going to need to take that leap, right? It's going to be advisable to take that leap. All things are going into the heart. The dove, the uh, butterfly, all things are going into the heart. You have what you need. You're going to get going, and it's time to make that leap, right? It's time to leap into that new relationship because of this new inspiration. Something unique is going on here that you did not have before. So we have the magician, for example, talk about the lines of communication, master of the tools. All his tools are floating around. He's a master of the tools. Combines heaven and the earth sort of a thing. Now, the new inspiration has provided you all the tools that you need to pursue that goal, to pursue the work interest that you had. You were wanting to get a raise at work. Maybe it's time to ask. Maybe it's time to open those lines of communication. The new inspiration has got you what you need and has opened up things, possibilities at work that didn't exist before. The new ideas. Everybody likes new ideas at work, likes to tweak the job, likes to tweak the, um, the procedures to make them even better, right? So we have reversed. Now we're talking about maybe not so expired, maybe not so inspired anymore. We've lost that inspiration, we've lost that spark, we've lost that new idea, and it could cause us to have issues, right? This could bring about issues with relationships, maybe, maybe that loss of new ideas, loss of inspiration is occurring in your relationship with your, your, your significant loved one or your husband or whatever, so that could be affecting the relationship. 
you may have a clouded mind. Now you'll notice instead of that bright idea up top, now we have the clouds up top. So when you see this and you see those clouds up top, maybe everything is sort of clouded. Maybe now we have this clouded situation to where it's not going to be as clear as what we had before. Maybe you need to reverse that and try to get that fixed as well. So this goes back also to the Lenormand card, right? The Lenormand card, you remember um, from that course where we talked about the clouds? So we have the clouds in Lenormand. We could have a situation where we have one of these, right? So that's sort of cloudy here and cloudy here. So it's clouded a bit. The clouds are up top. This is not an optimal situation for your relationship. It's not optimal for your job. Maybe you're stuck in a rut going the same old, same old the job, but reversed is not good. You've lost that inspiration. You've lost that loving feeling, you know, song, cue the song. So now it's becoming problematic for you. So that is the Ace of Swords. And the next card is the Two of Swords, otherwise known as Peace. Now an easy way to remember this is the peace sign. So you have the peace sign, the two fingers going up right over the swords. And the peace sign is telling you, hey, yeah, maybe it's time to balance things out. We are moon in Libra, maybe it's time to balance this out a bit. Maybe it's time to bring about the, you know, bring about that harmony and bring about that balance back, greater peace and, and get that harmony back. Um, another definition of the card that I've seen is sort of two paths on the road. So you have a fork in the road and you're trying to figure out which one to do and you're sort of indecisive, right? Analysis paralysis. You don't really know which one to do. So I've seen both of those very different meanings on the divinatory meanings of this, but basically most say it's about getting that balance back. It's about getting the peace restored. It's about getting the sympathy back, getting rid of some of the sorrow, um, you know, unselfishness, being okay with everything. So we have that definition as well for peace. But again, the, the easy way to remember, obviously, is going to be the peace sign. Now, we have a blue rose here, and we have two swords penetrating it. So we've already seen the fighting has begun. The swords have clashed, but the rose is in between. It's sort of holding the swords captive, right? It's holding them hostage. It's saying maybe it's time to relax a bit. Maybe it's time to peace out. Maybe it's time not to not to fighting. Maybe it's time to find that peace and that harmony. Now, again, you could be looking at a situation to where you're indecisive and you can't really figure out where to go. So, you know, back in the rider weight, we have the blindfold. It not only is at peace and the arms crossed type thing, but the swords are crossed instead of the arms, and we have that same type of pattern as well. So the Libra brings about the balance in this card. It's very important, and the moon brings sort of the feminine, the intuitive side as well. So we have that combination going on within the card. But just for reading and definitions, just remember peace and the peace sign. We have another card, uh, Truce, coming up, which... It's going to be a little bit different. So let's go for that now. Let's go for that. So you remember the emperor? The emperor is upside down using that abusiveness of the emperor upside down, right? Using that a bit too much authority, a bit too authoritative, a bit too demanding type thing. And we need to change that and make more of a peaceful situation. So this being upside down, Emperor has a lot of power. Emperor has a lot of influence, and he's using it to his advantage, sort of a trickster in many of the book definitions. And we need to stop doing that and find peace and harmony with that as well. But if you have it upside down, could be a situation to where you're not stuck in the road. You, d you don't have that indecision, and you've already chosen a path, but it's a bit of a hasty decision, right? It's a bit too quick of a decision. It's not exactly going to be the best decision. And it could be the end of peace. It could be the end of talking. Maybe everything is going to crap and you're getting sort of this selfish, you know, type of uh, feeling coming in. And you could have overload as well, right? 
could have a bit too much on the plate and instead of peace we have sort of a disruption. So peace upside down is that peace sign upside down. It's never going to be a good sign. It's going to be something that we want to avoid. So here we have a situation to where you don't have that peace. You have some conflict. You have some you know, sort of bad decisions in your life and the bad decisions, it's time to reverse that and it's time to get all of the tools that you know that you have, all of the abilities that you have and bring about some good messages, bring about some positivity and change that unpeaceful like nature to something better, right? As well as you could have that intuition coming back as well. We're going back to the intuition card and we could use that intuition to bring about the peace so we need to bring about the peace it's not here we could use our intuition we could use our sort of the feminine nature to bring that about a little more calmness a little more uh, relaxing no more anxiety type feeling so we have an opportunity here to bring about the peace that's not here so again the two of swords moon and libra and peace and the next card we have is the Three of Swords. As you can tell from the Rider Waite version, this is not a good card. You can tell, I mean, look at the, hang on, I'm going to rant here. I so love the thought. Look at, look at how this card compared to this card. Look at how much easier it is to read the Thought deck than it is the Rider Waite, right? Look how easy this is. You can tell it's a negative card. It's very dark. It's very dismal. You have this shredded rose. The rose that we've had in the previous card has been shredded by this, this, and this sword. Look at this sword. It's a damaged sword that we had from the ace. The ace sword is damaged. It's not looking good. You can see the pattern is the same. It's not looking good at all. This is terrible, right? And this card is called Sorrow. Now, an easy way to remember this is I want you to think of this rose. I want you to think of the rose being sawed. Sawed, rose, sorrow, right? Kind of goofy. All mnemonics are goofy. The more goofy it is, the better. The more weird it is, the better. We're going saw. All these swords are sawing this rose. Sawing the rose. The sword is damaged from the ace. This is a negative card. This is sorrow. This is heartbreak, right? You could have loss, you could have separation, could be the end of a relationship, obviously, could be the end of a relationship. But just remember, the rose is getting cut up and sawed. Now, astrology is concerned, we got Libra, but, I mean, but we have Saturn over here. Saturn is not going to be very kind to Libra, right? So the Saturn is, is just sort of is messing it all up. We have that sorrow feeling. So what does it mean? It means unhappiness it means all the things that you've tried to avoid that you've not wanted to deal with is sort of being shoved into your face right it's called sorrow for a good reason and the um sorrow as well is called lord of sorrow whatever um it's it's saturn in libra and saturn is sort of just doing a job on libra right saturn is not being kind to libra at all and that balance that was libra that was coming from the card before is trashed so sorrow is everything negative it's everything you don't want it's the heartbreak it's the fears that you have it's all the negative things that you can keep Maybe someone was abandoned. Maybe someone is consumed with their fears. You know, it's just overall negative card. And again, look how beautiful a depiction of negativity you have here compared to Rider Waite and any, any other deck. This one beats them all. This one rules them all. Very negative, very uh, feeling on here. So how are we going to use this in a reading? So we have this situation to where... We did not use our intuition and it's brought sorrow, right? So we have someone asking us, hey, I had this uh, guy that I was in love with and, you know, something weird happened and he just left. It's, it's a matter of we didn't use our intuition in that case. Our intuition should have seen that sorrow coming. In not using our intuition, we did not see that coming. So it sort of took us by surprise, right? So it could be a thing to where we tried, you remember peace from the last card, we tried a peaceful situation, but it didn't work out. The peace wasn't there. The conflict stayed. The peace sign, peace out, the, the peace, peace sign over the, so the peace sign didn't quite work out 
And now we have sorrow. Now we have heartbreak. Now we have abandonment. Everything sort of just went to crap, right? The Saturn in Libra is taking its toll on us. It, it's not a happy card. It's not a happy card at all. So it's it's made a world of sorrow. It's made a bunch of things um, that we're not happy with. And that lack of peace didn't do it. So what if we turned it upside down? Could be looking at the end of the sorrow. Could be looking at the end of the sorrow and the beginning of the peace, right? Or maybe the end of the sorrow and the beginning of a new relationship. Here we have a man. Maybe we have a new relationship on the horizon. Um, could be looking at the end of sorrow and everything is going to get better and we're going to get new inspiration. Do you remember the new idea? We have new inspiration coming and that's so exciting, right? Because you have this negative card and I highly encourage you to use reversals because you have these horrible cards and, and thought and you reverse them and it's sort of bringing an end to this horrible situation and bringing about new ideas, new inspiration. And it's really exciting. I mean, you have, it's sort of like the ace the ace, you know, the sort of the, the handle is getting restored. The sword is becoming a new sword again, you know, becoming a new sword again. And now we have that inspiration back and everything's going to recover. Everything's going to be okay. So in a reading, this would really be a great combination of cards. So again, we have sorrow. And the next card that we have is truce. Now, truce, easy to remember, the uh, truce, I believe it was called the Christmas truce, shaking hands, shaking hands. So it's easy to remember this card because we have two hands shaking, followed by two hands shaking. So we have that cross, right? And if also, if you look at it sideways, you can see, let me put the cross back on the screen. So we have that cross, always remember the cross, the two shaking hands, cross, and that's a truce. So let's remember something totally different than peace. Peace is peace, a resolution, sort of a, a resolution from it. Truce is a rest. The conflict is still going on. The conflict could still be going on, but we're taking a rest. We're taking a break. We're taking a rest from this conflict. We're taking a truce. Now we have Jupiter over Libra. Libra won't go away. Libra's a good sign, I'm just saying, but Jupiter is sort of getting that balance and bringing it about maybe too much uh, at once, maybe too much, maybe it's fake, maybe it's a bit uh, not as realistic as we're, we're ending the conflict. You're not ending the conflict. You have a truce. It's a temporary truce, right? It's not going away, but you're going to get a rest. So if you look at this, you'll notice we have a T, you have another T, and then you have another T. So we have a lot of T's. Easy to remember the T's and the handshake across we have a rest again rest a rest from the conflict it's not a resolution it hasn't gone away but we have a rest taking time out from it right so imagine if we had a bad relationship imagine if the relationship went sour <clears throat> we had sorrow and now we're looking at the future right my my husband and I, my boyfriend and I, we have nothing but problems. We're always in conflict, a bunch of sorrow. Can you tell me what's going to happen? Well, we have a truce. We have a truce from that conflict. Maybe the conflict isn't going to last forever. Maybe you're going to have a rest from the conflict. Work everything out. Is it going to be a resolution, a complete resolution? Is it going to be complete peace or complete wonderfulness or anything like that? No, no. It's a rest. It's a, it's a break. You're getting a break from that sorrow. But be aware that it's not over. This is not a conclusion. This is simply a rest. Something is not resolved, but, but we're going to have that rest. And that's important here, right? So we have a lot of readings. A lot of times we have maybe an abusive mate or something like that. Now we're going to have a rest from that. Would we prefer to have a peace? A complete peace, peace out. Would we prefer to have peace from that and have a complete closure? Sure. But if we have a rest, that's going to be okay as well. So again, think of the crossed handshake. And again, think of the truce, 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 tea truce, and tea truce. Lots and lots of teas. So what happens if we reverse it? Well, maybe it's coming back. You know, hate to tell you. 
Maybe that sorrow, maybe that abusive relationship or something is going to rear its ugly head again. Maybe the truce is over. Maybe that temporary respite, the temporary rest that you had from that bad situation is over. Hmm, you know, we could have something negative coming back here, or we could have some sorrow. My sorrow upside down. <laughs> Sorry. So we could have some sorrow coming back here. So definitely uh, not a good thing. You need to warn them, you know, your querent that, hey, that rest may be over. You could be looking at everything returning or at least some of it coming back. So again, that this card is Truce. And the last card that we have is called Defeat. You lost. Right? You lost. So... Defeat, Lord of Defeat. It's Venus and Aquarius. It's one of those things to where our fear kind of betrayed us, right? Or we had a sneak attack and we were defeated. It's sort of mentally weighing on us. Um, the, you know, the energy of this card is sort of uh, very unusual. You, we've lost control of the situation. We've been defeated, right? Basically, your fear has overcome us. And defeat is is sort of inevitable. So uh, not a good not a good card. How do we remember this card? Now this looks like a place that we would put our foot, right? And we have this pattern right here that's sort of a foot shape. So just remember the feet, defeat, 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 defeat. defeat. So um, that is that is defeat. Obviously, not a good card, not something that we really want to, um, not something we really want to see. How will we use it in a reading? Well, we had that truce, and the truce ended, and after the truce ends, it's not looking good for us, right? Not looking good for the quarant. It's not really looking that good. The truce has ended again. The double handshake uh, has sort of turned into a double slap in the face, and we're back to defeat. It's not going to turn out good for us. In other words, if we have the end of the truce, and what's a card we'd rather see? We'd rather see an inspirational card, right? Maybe an inspirational card? That'd be great, but nope. We're up to defeat. So if we have that... Um, sort of that relationship going and we're asking how it's going to go with our mate well it doesn't really look good it looks like maybe we have a sneak attack coming maybe the person's a bit of a trickster or something like that and it turns out that we have defeat uh, abusive relationship or a trickster with the emperor upside down we're in for defeat so again easy to remember just remember it looks like a place where you put your foot right so defeat and the feet go here. The feet go in this little this little caption right here. So five of swords is not really a good card. Sorry, right? Um, unless it's upside down. So we have it upside down now. It looks right side up, but whatever. So we have it upside down now. Maybe a defeat is not as uh, as prone as we thought it was going to be. Maybe we're not going to get defeated. In fact, maybe we have peace coming, right? We have a bad situation. So I have an abusive relationship. Everything's going terrible. What do you read for me? Well, I read defeat turned defeat turned upside down means maybe we're going to have a successful turnout of this and we have peace coming after this. So it looks like that their person is going to change their ways. The defeat is upside down which is good because now we have peace, right? Now we have peace, maybe a bright idea, maybe we turn into the magician, now we're the master of our tools, and now we're gonna be able to find a way around it and not have any more abusive relationship or bad relationship. Maybe we use our intuition to see through that, and now we have defeat reversed, and so now we're gonna have a winning situation. We're having a court case. I'm going into a court case. I need one card, is it gonna go good for me? Defeat. No, it's not going to go good for you. Whoops. Reversed. Ooh, now we may have a win. Now, it may turn out, right? Defeat turned upside down. Maybe we're going to come out on top. Maybe it's going to be okay. So, again, that Venus and Aquarius feel, you know, it's sort of that, it's sort of that thing. Sort of that thing. Negative. Maybe not so negative, but definitely a good card. Just remember the feet go here is sort of like a place where you put your foot and you have the foot sort of shape right there. So that is the end of the first of the swords. We blew through five cards and I hope you have learned a lot.
Now, I would like to take a moment and thank my patrons. These are people that support me on Patreon and make this video possible. Allie Cat, Annie LeMaster, Crystal McGinn, Janet Littler, KSW, La Me, and Richard Zeh. All of you are wonderful and awesome, and their contributions have made it possible for me to make more videos, better quality videos. And if you would like to join the patron crowd, please go to the link below and I have a link to my Patreon account. Any support would be greatly appreciated. And that would be the end of this video. Thank you for joining. Please hit like and subscribe. By like and subscribing, you will attract more viewers and more viewers make a more community. And this, we really are a community. We have several people that have met other tower readers on here in the comments and have done collaborations and make new friends and i'd like all of us to be a community and be together in this learning process so we can all sort of show off what we've learned and share and ask questions and things like that thank you so much for watching